So today I'm going to be installing the air suspension on the car. So I've got airlift performance suspension going on. I'm hoping the first half of the install in terms of getting the struts on is going to be exactly the same as fitting any other set of coilovers etc. The big difference is obviously you've got wiring loom and airlines to run. Um, this isn't going to be my normal how-to type video because I never like to do suspension and brakes and things like that on video because I think there's something quite serious in terms of if you get it wrong it can be quite dangerous. So what I would say is obviously use my video as a bit of guidance. If you're unsure, reach out to a professional and let them install your air kit or coilovers, whatever you're trying to install. So let's jump straight into it. So I'm going to get the car up in the air on the jacks and then we'll start getting the old suspension off. Okay, for those that haven't seen my video on YouTube, check it out. I'll put a link in the description to the quick jacks that I'm about to use. So I've done a full review of them and for me, I, couldn't, I wouldn't want to do jobs like this without having them anymore. It's so much safer and easier to jack the car up than it is trying to do axle stands and everything else and jacks. And I've got the big proper jacks, but it's still, this is so much easier. All I do, get the button and up she goes. And the good thing is it has that safety locking mechanism. So if you want to know more about these quick jacks, check out the video on my channel. There's only a few videos ago and I'll put the link in the description. Um, and you get all the information, the good things and the bad things about these jacks. But you can see that's nearly at full height. And then all we do, drop that back down until it locks in place. And that little cam down there, if you see there, that's now locked in place. You get plenty of height on it, as you can see under the car. So if you've got to do any jobs like this, it gives you plenty of room to be able to work on the car. So let's get those wheels off and start to get the old suspension off the car. Okay, so one of the first tips I would give in terms of even before I've got the wheels off the car is one, if you can afford it, and I know these can be pretty expensive, try and get hold of an impact gun for any jobs like this because you don't know, especially with how old some cars are, the bolts get really rusty and corroded and on. And this just gives you that bit of helping hand. Obviously, if not, make sure you've got some breaker bars or something on hand, just in case any of the suspension bolts are a little bit tighter than what you would expect. Um, I picked these up, Ryobi, they're probably one of the cheaper ones out there, but you've seen all the jobs that I've done, whether it's on the BRZ, any of the minis, this is the impact gun I use and it works. And I don't think I've found one bolt yet that I haven't been able to undo with this Ryobi one. So fully recommend these as a cheap DIY. Obviously, if you're a mechanic, you're never going to be buying these sort of tools. You're going to be going for the expensive ones. But honestly, these do the job and they are really good. Second tip as well is where you've got to take the wheel nuts off, especially when you've got nice aftermarket wheels or even just your stock wheels and you don't want to damage the rim. What you can do is buy one of these. And what it is, it's a thin walled um, socket. And if you look on the outside, it's PVC lined. And the reason for that is, when you take that off, put it into that hole, if that rubs against your alloy wheel, because there's not always room on aftermarket wheels especially, it's only gonna rub away at the soft PVC rather than taking out your paint finish on your wheels. So I'd always recommend for wheel bolts, if you can get hold of them, and again, they're just a cheap eBay or Amazon purchase, they're not expensive and it just avoids you damaging the finish on your wheel. So that's another tip. So I'm gonna get these wheels off and just take a look at the coilovers that are on it. So previously, I mean, when I brought this car, should I say, it had coilovers on it. So it's got BC coilovers as far as I'm aware. Now I wasn't, I didn't want to uh, keep those. So I made an agreement with the uh, person I brought it off that I would give him those coilovers back once I'd changed my suspension. So those are going to be coming off the car and going straight in the post to the uh, person that I brought them off. So a big thank you to him for actually lending them to me because it's been a little bit longer because I thought this work was going to be done at the new house but the house moves taking longer than expected. So to save him waiting for his suspension, I've got it all here so I'm going to put my new one on. Okay, so just looking in the wheel arch, I mean for the age of the car because I think it's a 2007. I don't think it's that, that crusty under here to be fair, it looks well sort of looked after. There doesn't seem to be any really bad signs of corrosion or anything to worry about. The good thing with mini suspension, whether it's coilovers or the standard suspension you're m removing, is that there are only three bolts, I think, for the rears that you have to undo. 
there's one there so let's get in there so you can see there's just one up there one there and then if we come down and look under the car we can see just this lower one here and this is the one it's tricky sometimes it's really stiff the other one is actually it's just so long it comes all the way through if you see and comes out the other side here so th for the rear suspension anyway that's all you need to remove the three bolts and the rear suspension comes straight out because the drop links are all attached to these rear arms so hopefully that should be really quick and simple so we'll catch up after i've removed that strut okay so removing those two top bolts i literally reached up with my impact gun or you can do it here with the socket and they are 13 mils so there's one here and one on the other side now when i've come to this bolt i think i spoke too early when it came to the ryobi tools so this bolt is really tight and in so this is an 18 so what i'm going to do is get my 18 on a big uh, breaker bar and try and break that off and um, just initially and then i can undo it with my impact gun because it's such a long bolt as i mentioned you're there for a while when you use just a normal socket but it can be done okay so this is the breaker bar i use so it's not the longest but all it did was did it a quarter of a turn and then hopefully with the impact gun you can see that's out so you can see the length of that bolt so that's why i use the impact gun i recommend it just because when you're doing that or put undoing that you are going to be there for a while but it's not the hardest of jobs to do if not it just makes your life easier so hopefully the two bolts at the top this should be loose and all we've got to do is just maneuver this down drop it and angle it a bit just to get this strut out for the back so let's get that done out okay one tip as well so I completely forgot about it. So you can see this brake line here runs through this bracket. So all you've got to do is wedge that off. So I need two hands to do that. But just a reminder, there is this cable here and this brake line here that needs to come off. So all you do is use your fingers and pull those off. They literally just press in, especially on coilovers. But I think it's exactly the same on the aftermarket. I mean, sorry, stock suspension. Is you just wiggle those off and they should come off. So I'm gonna use two hands and do that and then my suspension should drop out okay so out come the coilovers you can see they're a little bit dusty but actually in really good condition there's a tiny little bit of uh, surface rust there by the looks of it on the spring but you get that on used coilovers especially in the UK where we have lots of salt on the roads but BC they're in really good condition for uh, what they are and how long they've been on the car so that's the old suspension out I'm going to do the exact same process on the other side, so I'm not going to record that. Um, but as you can see, it was one bolt there, two bolts through the top mount. Then you had the brake line going through there, and I think the handbrake cable, I think it is, um, through there. And those you just pull off. So rear suspension is super easy on the R56 to remove, and it's a very similar process on the R53 as well. Okay, so one of the things I was just worrying about was basically these are sided, making sure one, it's on the right side. So in the UK, the left is for the passenger side. That's nice and easy. But if you look, that plate that sits underneath the top mount is angled. And what I wanted to make sure is, because these are second hand, is whoever I purchased them off, um, they didn't sort of twist the top mounts or anything like that. And they're now facing the wrong way. So there's a good guide here so for any parts that you buy from airlift performance you basically get instructions so you can put the part number in and the part numbers on every part and it gives you instructions and what it's basically saying is if this is the rear of the car over on the right then that wider taller bit needs to be at the front which is correct and i just wanted to check that on both of my rear struts so that's another little tip in terms of installing it if we go under the car You'll see, I haven't done these up yet, but I've got the two 13 mils in. This is all facing the right direction. And then if we come down here, what we'll have to do is obviously I might need to get a jack or something to lift this up so we can bolt in. And looking at the instructions, this part, so when you look at the bottom of the strut, it sticks out to one side. That 
should be what sits in here and then we bolt through this side so I'm hoping the fact that these have already been on an R56 they're at the right ride height so I'm not doing any adjustments to that the one thing I did notice is the brackets are missing off them so this should be a bracket where I should be able to clip these two that's missing so I might need to do something with cable ties or something to try and keep these out of the way and make sure they don't get damaged in terms of the brake lines but I'll worry about that after today is getting the struts on and all in place and then we'll tackle the airlines and how these will go in here somewhere up into the boot of the car where all the uh, compressor and everything will be okay so as I mentioned I'm gonna use a trolley jack just to jack up this hub and get it a little bit higher so you can see just here the bolt there going in and out isn't quite lined up so I'm just gonna use a second jack or someone else if you've got a, a second pair of hands just to lift this hub so you can line that up and make sure you don't do any cross threading and with every bolt make sure that you do it up by hand first before you use any power tools or any sockets or anything so you don't risk cross threading so I'm just going to jack this up a bit more and get that bolt done up okay so that's both sides now I've got the rear struts on so again it's just a reverse of removing them the two top bolts and the one lower bolt so I'm going to go now, take the front wheels off and get the front struts out and swapped over because sometimes that's where you have issues with the drop links especially if they're the old original ones that are sort of 10 years plus now they can get crusted, corroded and stuff like that so I'm hoping the front should be okay I think my um, air struts come with new ones anyway that I don't know whether the previous owner supplied those or whether they were just fitted to the kit God knows um, but I've got some new ones, worst case, if I have any issues with the old ones. So let's go to the front now and get them off. Okay, so with the R56 front struts, they're easy to get off. You've got three bolts at the top, one, two, three. Then coming into here, you've got these lines that need to come off. Then you have the drop link that's just up here that needs to be undone. And then right down uh, here, you've got this bolt here that needs to come off. So you've got this bolt, the bolt for the drop link and the three bolts up top to remove this so again I'm not going to show you the process it's a case of removing those three bolts nice and easy okay an order of service for removing the bolts is to do the drop link one at the top first then do the lower one down here and then we come up and undo these three bolts and we should be able to drop the strut out okay so with my car it was all a little bit tricky Especially to get this top drop link connection off so I ended up doing the bottom one down here and getting that undone now when I'm removing this lower bolt that goes through the back here what I've also done is just put a jack stand underneath not on the disc but on the knuckle underneath just to take any weight because obviously especially with having a big brake kit and heavy disc potentially it could put a bit of strain when it or drop so I didn't want to do that when I'm removing this lower part. So it's just supporting the weight of it, it's just a little bit of a tip. You may not need it and that's fine, you choose not to, but it helped me out a little. So one thing I would say is make sure you don't snag any of these lines. So I need to remove that so it doesn't get caught when I'm removing the strut. Okay, so reinstalling the strut couldn't be any easier. So it's exactly the reverse of removing. You've still got your standard three studs at the top. You've still got this bit down here that loops in and you still got where your drop lick attaches so just reverse the steps put it up through there just put a couple of bolts in first to hold it in at the top then worry about sliding everything in now, there's lots of videos online about how to fit struts so I'm not going to go into detail on this um, I've seen people put copper grease at the bottom to make it a little bit easier to slide in and out do whatever you need to and get that strut in Good morning everyone, so it's the next day, so I just wanted to let you know where we finished off last night and what's to do today. So if you look, we've got all of the uh, the struts are in, front and rear, both sides. So that is all done and dusted, so the car's got suspension to a certain degree. However, what I've not done is the electrics or the airlines yet. So I think this morning, I'm going to focus on the airlines and get those ran, because I need to get those 
obviously front to back um, and getting them to the compressor and everything else in the air tank and the management system that's all going to sit in the boot so what I'll do let's go and show you inside the boot um, because when I tried to fit the wooden floor that came with the tank from the previous R56 I had a little bit of an issue because I've got that cage in so let's take a look okay so when I was uh, when I tried to put the piece of wood in the tank literally sat right there in between those two struts and hit those there was no way I could use that piece of wood that came previously and um, from the car it came out of I want to try and retain this I'm not quite sure how it's gonna work yet and to get potentially that foam out and to get the wood in and everything else I'm gonna to need to remove probably the front seats because of the cage if I didn't have the cage it'd be a lot easier but obviously I want to keep the cage so I'm gonna work around it so what I'm gonna do is actually just lay the tank here get it all set up make sure it's working on the car and then I can take another day just to make the setup itself look pretty so you can see here I've got the wiring harness it looks a bit messy but I've labeled everything up so where it's for height sensors which I'm not fitting but that's what those are the compressor wires we've got an ignition wire etc so I've labeled it all up so I know exactly what each of these cables are doing I've started to run the power cable and I'm just going to run it under that false floor down the side of the car through there because there's a rubber bung just behind the battery and wire that up so that's nice and easy and that's one of the things that delayed progress yesterday because uh, whoever owned this first actually cut the power cable short which wasn't helpful and my local uh, car shop didn't have any power cable thick enough so I've just been and brought one of these amplifier kits from Halfords and I'm just going to steal the power cable and the good thing is it's a fused power cable already so I don't need to mess with any of that it's got the connections on the end so all I'll need to do is just join it sort of halfway down where this original cable has been cut um, and get that up and running so this for me now is the easy bit in terms of power I'm going to try and take an ignition line off the uh, off this over here as well um, and then the only other thing I need to find is a ground where there'll be a bolt somewhere in the boot in one of these or whatever to ground it to or even where some of the uh, rear seat belt stuff attached to the car can you even use that as a ground so I'm not too worried about the electrical wiring so for me the big thing today is running the airlines okay so while I'm under the car the one thing I did notice is the R56 has these this plastic shield in like a flat floor underneath now I'm assuming that the fuel lines may be run down this passenger side one. It might be worth dropping a few bolts and taking a look and see if we can follow the fuel lines to the back of the car. Because then we could you can see just there that pipe hanging down. Obviously it's going to be secured, it's not going to be hanging down. But that means that the airlines could technically run here and come all the way up because there's some bungs just above here. You can see when you go in the car or from the side I may be able to run the airlines underneath the car but up behind that plastic shrouding then up into the boot and then obviously attached to the manifold if not the other option is to go straight into the car um, in the wheel well and then come through the interior trim but there's so much going on in the under the interior trims I don't want to mess that up too much and make the uh, pipes tight or anything like that so I might have a look at these now and what I'll do is once I work out where I'm gonna run the airlines I'll let you know just so you've got some tips on where you could run yours if you wanted to okay so this is where your boot build comes completely unique and every person does it a little bit different so what I'm gonna do is if you lift this carpet up you can see we've got a hole there and a hole there so I've had to enlarge that one because what I'm gonna do with mine is the braided lines for the rear struts actually have enough length that they can come up through here so I can have that join in the boot and it's serviceable so I'm going to actually bring those up through so what I'm going to get is a brand new rubber bung to drill a hole through I don't have one yet so I may have to temporarily install it for now just to get it working but what you can see is because I've had to drill through I have brushed some paint on the, the bare material that I've uh, drilled through so just make sure you do that to avoid any issues of rust it's going to need a couple of coats but i want to make sure that's fine and 
you want to make sure you use rubber bungs and drill holes through them so one your pipes can't rub on any of this sort of metal surface around the edge because eventually that could wear away and also you want your car weather tight so you can see there it's exposed to the elements so any water flicking up could come up into the boot probably not going to happen but just to try and avoid that can do there are so also some rubber bungs in here that you could potentially use if you didn't want to do that but they're right above the hot exhaust so I wanted to stick to the side because when you come underneath and look up you can see those two holes and you can see there's a lot of air space where we can run stuff right to the top of this metal and bring it through and what I'm gonna do is run my lines underneath this plastic trim so I've dropped that down there's brake lines one side fuel lines the other or maybe brake lines on both not quite sure but either way I'm going to attach my air lines to those because I know if the brake fluid or fuel lines whatever they are are protected you know there's going to be no chance that your air lines are going to be damaged because you, Mini wouldn't design it in a way that they could get damaged so I'm going to stick straight to those and we should have no issues come up through the boot floor oh excuse the blood I've cut my finger I'm on one of the little bits of metal so yeah I'm gonna uh, run the lines under here and cable tie them to everything that I can so that you have no chance of them drooping down and rubbing so let's go to the front And if we look at the front, it's a little bit tricky to see, but I'm going to come down, stick as close to the firewall as possible, making sure you avoid any moving parts. It's a little bit crusty in here, but it's nice to see that we've got some sort of maybe Super Pro or aftermarket bushings in here, because they're the ones that use, usually go and need replacing, so that's good that they've been done. I'm going to come down through the back of here, and then all the way down. So you can see if you remove these little sort of plastic bolts, you can get enough access without taking this plastic shrouding off which is good as well hey everyone so you join me in the afternoon where i am literally finished so i've got my final check to do which i'm just going to go under the car and check all my lines and everything are tucked but you can see here i've got my lines for my air all in all the wiring is done there's air in the bags so I've actually took, just in here, took them through down and under the plastic trays so all the uh, air lines are next to either the brake lines or the fuel lines. And you can see that just on the rear as well, so it's probably difficult to see but behind here I've used the rubber bungs that I talked about earlier in the video to go up and into the, uh, the boot space. So I'm a little bit grubby because it's not the, the cleanest of jobs be done when you're lying on the floor and everything but hey ho it's been an experience obviously never done air suspension before and if I'm honest it's not that much more complicated than fitting normal coilovers the big difference is obviously you've got to worry about running those air lines which again isn't difficult it's just time consuming and making sure it's safe and nothing catches the other one is the wiring but the wiring couldn't be any simpler it's literally a red power cord to the battery so I'll go and show you that and all I've done is bring you in okay so I've just show you inside the car so temporarily I'm running the battery cable so the power cable through the pollen filter and that's purely because it's a big hole but what I'm going to be doing this is just to get it on the ground and get it tested and make sure everything's working is actually there is just to the left up behind this panel there's actually like a rubber um, bung that I'm going to come through as a long-term solution and what I've done is just temporarily ran it in and just tucked it in underneath here so and then ran the back battery cable the power cable then just through in the back of there so if we come through everything's hidden so my seat deletes still there at the moment but you can see this is all temporary so please don't judge in terms of the fit and finish in here this is purely to get it down on the ground and get it tested so over the winter all this is going to come back out replace these hard lines because I couldn't quite get them to come out so this fixing's a bit tight here so temporarily I've just connected them all up just to test everything again I'm not gonna have any of this on display all of this is going to be mounted where that rear seat 
trim is there so I'll work out some sort of solution for burying all this down into that so I'll get a boot space because I don't want to lose it but again this is just temporary making use of the wooden board that I was given as well just to uh, temporarily mount it all you can see there all this needs a good clean and a polish there's lots of marks and stuff on everything but again this is all just testing purposes so I've turned the ignition on and what I've done is taken um, this out here temporarily as well so I'm going to use the lighter as an ignition source so that's hidden away in there and that tells this to turn on and off with the car obviously I've talked about the power I've grounded and all I've done is use the bolts off the latch and use that as a ground to ground the whole system um, and then the only other cable you then have to run is through the controller through to the front so at the moment I've just tucked it under here and thrown it into the front for now what I will do is bury that in the centre console and bring it up the back of the dash um, it's just this weekend I've just run out of time I want to get it down on the ground and actually make sure the car drives yes yeah, suspension works and there's no issues from that side of things but as you can see it wasn't too bad now what I would say to get to this point it took me two days but that was because yesterday I was having issues with getting um, the drop links out on the stocks as well the the coilovers that were installed previously and I didn't want to damage them so I had to reuse them so it took a lot of time doing that and then had to go out to Halfords and get some of the uh, some power cable because whoever had removed this from the car had actually cut it with um, when they took it out so it wasn't long enough to reach the battery then today um, what time are we on now so I've probably spent another sort of half a day running all the airlines under all the plastic sheeting getting all the electrics finished and just bolting all this down to this piece of wood so as a minimum I'd say you'd need a full weekend to get it up and running obviously making it look pretty uh, you're going to need some extra time to do that and I know the professionals can probably knock it out a lot quicker but this is literally the first time I've ever installed it on a car at all let alone a minute so hopefully you found that useful what I'll do I'll share lots of links and everything in terms of some of the pieces that I've brought what I am going to do as well next is get the car off the ramps and see what it looks like on the ground so I'm going to show you that next okay so this is exactly why I said to check with all your wheels and everything in place so all my lines where I've run them seem to be okay and don't seem to be touching however if you can see let's see how far I can get the camera in my tyres are just touching the bottom of the red strut now if I obviously went through and drove that that could rub through something it could damage the tyre or the strut so what I am going to do, or what I'm going to need to do, is probably raise the, the adjustable bit on the front just slightly. I'm assuming you can do that um, on these. I need to read through the adjustments. But yeah, that's a little bit of a worry because I haven't got the tools. So when I brought them, they didn't come with the tools to undo, undo the locking collar. So I'll order some of those online, but at least I can get it down on the ground and see what it looks like. I just won't be driving it very far at the moment with that obviously rubbing um, but it'll be good to actually see it and see what's going on one good thing I know it's a bit icky under here and this subframe I think will probably be done at some point but you can see there's some new bushes there which is nice that looks very shiny I don't know whether that's just a, a brand new OEM or one I don't think that's aftermarket I think my sump certainly looks a bit damp yeah there's a good bit of oil dripping from that can't really tell where it's coming from but we'll have to have a look at that at some point and then the gearbox as well that looks a little bit damp but all things for how much I paid for this car I knew there were going to be issues anyway so no real concerns seeing that it's sort of to be expected with a car of this age so whether it's the crush washer that's gone here or whether it's coming from the seal on the pan god knows but we'll work that out it's not like i do millions of miles in this car at the moment so i've got plenty of time to just take it apart and sort all these little issues out as we go along so yeah it's a bit of a downer that i'm not gonna be able to go for a drive in it but at least i'll be able to see what it looks like when it's down on the floor 
and see how low it goes. So ignore the, the crusty bit, but you can see there the flat underfloors. And that's where the resonator was taken out of the JCW pipe as well. So I do have a decat at some point to go on under here. I was expecting to do all this work at the new house, but the house moves delayed with lots of stuff going on in land registry and planning permission and stuff. So here a little longer and I thought I might as well get all the, these jobs done. So let's uh, get from under the car and lower the jacks and see what it looks like. Okay, so as you can see, it's on the ground now. Not quite sure what height setting it's on or anything like that. I think it's on its highest settings, but I could be completely wrong. So what I'm gonna do is pull the jacks out now so there's no issue with lowering it to the ground. And then let's see how low we can get it. Okay, so let's go and play with the controls and see how low we can make it. Oh my god. So this is without any planning or adjustment or anything. This is purely, let's see what it can go. Now it can go lower. Um, the only thing I've noticed is, so here, we're touching the soft fabric at the back. So no concerns at the back there. The front, literally you can't get anything in between that arch. So obviously you've got the soft liner in the front. So, I mean, that is really low. So I'm sure there's some camber adjustment on the front maybe, and um, that we can have a play around with so we can get it even lower if we want it on the front. But even now, just seeing the way it is, that is a lot lower than I've ever had a car before. And it looks, it looks cool. Wow, so what a weekend. I mean, uh, airlift performance, I think I can't complain at the kit. Everything's worked exactly as I expected it to. Um, the instructions online are really good. Um, and you can see for how low I am already. And technically I could go lower if I wanted to, although I wouldn't be moving anything. This would purely be static lows for a show or when you're parked up certainly couldn't drive it like this because it'd be rubbing like crazy um, but it's done exactly what I expected it to and worked exactly so the install um, I don't think if you're capable of fitting coilovers I think 100% you're capable of fitting air suspension the struts themselves the process was exactly the same no difference the only thing you got to think about are those airlines and then obviously put in some really simple electrics but even again if you've ever done an amp on a car you'd easily be able to manage the electrics to get this up and running as well so I know it was a bit of an odd one today it wasn't a install video with every detail I could normally do just because I don't I'm just not a fan of doing uh, coilover suspension brakes videos so I do apologize if you came to this looking for a full in-depth the install video because it wasn't gonna happen but I just wanted to bring you along for the journey I mean the the car's disgusting at the moment, so it's all a bit filthy, so you can't really see quite how good this looks. But in terms of if you're aiming to get lows on your car, 100% this is the way to go uh, in terms of air, because I'm able to raise this up at a push of a button and go and drive uh, into the multi-storey car park at work, go over all the speed bumps again, and then lower it back down when I want it to look good. So it's a hopefully best of both worlds. The thing I can't give you today is my thoughts in terms of the difference of driving. So I'll do a first drive video because what I'm going to need to do is raise those fronts because the front tyres are touching the bottom of the struts. Um, so I don't want to do any damage to anything. So I'm going to order the tools so I can adjust the struts, raise them up just slightly. And I mean, this definitely can go lower. So I don't think there's any concerns in terms of just raising it up a few mil to avoid uh, the the strut and the tire touching 
So hopefully you found today's video entertaining. I know it's a bit of a, it's probably a bit of a long winded one, but it was really useful to do. And if you've got any sort of simple questions around the air suspension setup that I've gone for um, and the installation process, feel free to post down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.